Hey guys, Nuan no here with Movie Snigger Reviews. Now, you may have heard that Face Off is getting the reboot treatment. And as you may expect, the fans have responded with joy and singing praises for Paramount. <laughs> I'm just kidding, they hate it. Now, you know me, I don't hate the idea of a reboot or remake. Some of the best movies are remakes, like John Carpenter's The Thing and Martin Scorsese won an Academy Award for remaking Infernal Affairs, so they can be good. And even if the movie is bad, the original will always be there. It's not going away. And fans are crying, Face Off is a masterpiece, it's a 90s classic, oh, please leave it alone. Well, technically, they are leaving it alone. If you own Face Off, a Blu-ray or a DVD, nothing's gonna happen to it. It's not gonna magically be replaced by the reboot. Let me tell you something. Your private movie collection? It's safe. Now that I got my little mini rant out of the way, let's talk about Face Off and how to reboot it. Face Off is one of my all-time favorite movies, no doubt about it. It's a simple premise. There's an FBI agent, Sean Archer, and a crazy terrorist called Caster Troy. Caster has hidden a bomb somewhere in the city, but he is in a coma, so they can't get any information out of him. So Sean takes Caster's actual face to go undercover among the bad guy's friends to find out the location of the bomb. Then Caster wakes up from his coma and takes Sean's face. The face. Damn, this movie is so brilliant. Now, what could a reboot do with this premise? Take one goddamn guess. If the filmmakers decide to stay in the modern world, not so much. I think in order to give new fans and old ones something new and exciting, and in order to make full use of the potential of this concept, you gotta go sci-fi. A near future setting, maybe 15-20 years in the future. Imagine a futuristic city like in Minority Report or Ready Player One where FBI agents use Mission Impossible style face masks to go undercover. But now the criminals are also catching up. They are finding new ways to detect the undercover agents. So the FBI needs a new type of technology. They have to implant actual faces to fool the criminals. I think this could be really cool. Visually, it will be easy to distinguish this setting from the original. And remember, the original vision for Face Off was supposed to be a slightly futuristic setting. Don't believe me? Well, remember that prison section with the magnetic boots? That section doesn't really fit into the rest of the movie. Also, face transplants didn't exist in 1997. They still don't. But if you go full-on sci-fi, all these ideas will fit into the world and form a more cohesive narrative. No more drugs for that man. Now, you can't talk about Face Off without the two leads, Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. Now, originally, they wanted Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, but director John Woo decided to go for Cage and Travolta, two actors who were mostly known for their dramatic work, and in the case of Travolta, a lot of romantic comedies. Wee, you get looking. God. Remember, Travolta kind of disappeared in the 80s, and thanks to Tarantino, made a comeback with Pulp Fiction, where he got a nomination for Best Actor. Then in 1996, Travolta starred in his first big action movie, Broken Arrow. Nicolas Cage, who had won an Academy Award for Best Actor, started his action career with The Rock, also in 1996. Then in 1997, the stars aligned as these two teamed up with director John Woo to make one of the most explosive films of the 90s. It's not just that these two guys had over-the-top personalities and they were good in action. They had the dramatic chops to pull off the serious and emotional moments. And that's one of the more surprising aspects of Face Off. It has hard-hitting dramatic moments that you don't expect from your average action movie. The scene where the undercover Sean Archer is trying to convince his wife of his real identity, that's Nick Cage at the top of his game. And the undercover scenes where he has to fit in with the criminals are fascinating. He realizes that the criminals he used to hate are just people, people with kids, people who have a code and they would even die for each other. There's also a lot of drugs and you get to see Nicolas Cage do this. Cage and Travolta are not just playing two characters, they're actually playing four. Because after they swap places, Cage is playing Archer who's trying to act like Caster. 
so they are portraying one character but with subtle hints and mannerisms of the other one. And then there's this. <laughs> <Wee>! <laughs> what a predicament! <laughs> Look, I love Arnold and Stallone, but they could never pull this off. So who do you get to replace Nicolas Cage and John Travolta? Now, I think this is the hardest part for the reboot to pull off. And once again, I think it's best not to go with action stars like The Rock or Ryan Reynolds. Please do not get those two. Don't do it, okay? Paramount, don't, don't you do it. I was thinking Jake Gyllenhaal for Caster Troy. We have seen him do creepy weird characters in movies like Nightcrawler and Ryan Gosling for Sean Archer because he's usually the silent good guy type. I also think that once they swap places, these two actors have what it takes to play the other. Now remember, these two are just my choices. They haven't even announced casting yet. They might not even have two white guys. They might have one white guy and one black guy, which you can still pull off if it's sci-fi. Maybe in the future, the FBI have the technology to change somebody's skin tone. And that could create some really interesting possibilities. Maybe the bad guys have some kind of a chemical that they can put on the skin to use like a litmus test to detect the good guys. This might create some interesting and suspenseful scenarios. Of course, they could have one character being male and the other female. I mean, I don't know. The possibilities are endless if you go with sci-fi. I say go for it. <laughs> Which brings me to the final piece of the puzzle. Now, I didn't exactly set this up like a puzzle, but we'll go with it. Face Off was directed by John Woo, who was best known for his Hong Kong action movies, and he brought some of that flair to Face Off. You can sense his style in every shot of the movie. The melodramatic imagery, the cheesy slow motion, and the doves. Not only that, he injected pure adrenaline into the movie. Every action scene packs a punch. The explosions are huge. The shootouts feel chaotic, but also graceful like ballet. And man, the practical stunts. You have planes crashing into buildings. You have motorboats crashing through bigger boats. And who's gonna do this today? The answer sadly is not many. Hollywood doesn't do real explosions anymore. And as much as I love the doves and the slow motion and the cheesy drama, I also don't think that would fit in with a sci-fi setting. And it probably won't go over very well with today's audiences. I don't believe the punks I have to deal with these days. Now that stuff works incredibly well in a parody movie like 21 Jump Street, but I don't want Face Off to be a comedy. It really makes me miss the 90s. So who do you get to direct this cyberpunk action drama? I have two picks. First pick is Robert Rodriguez. He's just coming off of Alita Battle Angel, which is a sci-fi movie about people who change body parts. It's also got really stylish action scenes and colorful characters. My second pick is Lee Vernell, who directed a little movie called Upgrade. That's also a sci-fi movie where people change body parts. Face Off could be really interesting if they go in a body horror direction. Plus, Upgrade had some really gory and really well choreographed action. Conclusion I think if the reboot focuses on action, drama, sci fi, and a little bit of body horror, it would be really interesting while also distinguishing itself from the original. You also need two strong leads and a director who can inject some style into the movie. Paramount, please contact me if you need ideas. I'll be happy to help you out. <laughs> Look, guys, we didn't ask for a reboot, but we're getting one anyway. All I can hope for is please don't make the same movie again. Don't try to make a cheesy 90s action movie because we already have it. It's called Face Off and it's awesome. Do something different with this concept. So if I find out that they're doing an action comedy with Ryan Reynolds and The Rock, I'm gonna be like, Oh well, plan B. Let's just kill each other.